the best 3-row midsize SUVs to buy for 2021. Need to carry up to 8 people in a vehicle that won't crowd your driveway? Brand loyalty makes purchasing a new vehicle an easy call for most folks, you belong to a Ford family or a Toyota household, and you never cross that line. But there also are plenty of people who are looking for the best deal, or the latest thing, or the most popular vehicle in their particular class, brand be damned. In the case of the Ford Explorer and Toyota Highlander, both are the latest thing in the three-row sport utility segment, and they're perennial bestsellers, to boot. So, if you were new to either brand and looking to see what all the fuss is about, which would be the better choice? The 2020 Toyota Highlander is the most recently redesigned SUV of the pack and also the segment sales leader. Entering its fourth generation, the Highlander comes with sleeker lines and a bolder design inside and out. Our mid-trim XLE tester was priced at $42,320 the least expensive SUV of the pack in our recent 9 SUV big test, by thousands of dollars, as tested. But when you look around its interior, it's not the cheapest looking by any measure. With its leather seats, 18-inch wheels, power lift gate and an 8.0-inch infotainment touchscreen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Amazon Alexa, the Highlander brings tremendous value. Based on a new rear-drive unibody platform, the Ford Explorer has been re-engineered from the ground up for the 2020 model year. The platform is a first for the Explorer, shared with the Lincoln Aviator, and Ford updated the new generation with an angular, modern design and adds a more spacious cabin. Engine choices are a base turbo 4 or a larger V6. Our base XLT tester arrived with a price of $47,715 with a turbo 4, though it came with a surprisingly short list of amenities. We realize most people won't buy these vehicles for fun, enthusiast reasons. You want practicality, space, and comfort. Bearing that in mind, we ditched our Onisoka Mexico 66 track testing sneakers, donned our soccer mom yoga pants and hockey dad tracksuits, and set out on a series of loops of Los Angeles South Bay Area, spending plenty of time checking out third row access, cargo space and the intuitiveness of the varying infotainment systems. Toyota Highlander, what's it like to drive? The Toyota Highlander's 295 HP, 263 LB foot 3.5 liter V6 and 8 speed automatic are carried over from the previous generation. And while Toyota engineers insist there were some updates to the guts of the powertrain, our panel of testers agreed that one of the notable downsides is the way the engine and the transmission played along together, or rather, didn't. Although the Highlander was plenty smooth around town, under hard acceleration, such as the need to pass a delivery truck on a narrow road, engine roar was loud and thrashy, while downshifts were sloppy and ponderous. Features editor Christian C. Boss comments displayed our consensus of frustration, the Highlander makes the majority of its power higher in its power band than most customers would feel like operating, while the transmission is geared so long and tall that it takes forever to get there. The resulting driving experience is a frustrating dance of full-throttle jabs punctuated by off-throttle coasts followed by more jabs as the transmission inevitably changes gears trying to deliver the power you need to get the Highlander out of its own way. Despite the harsh comments on the powertrain, we praised the Highlander's suspension, which delivered a smooth ride though things got choppy on bad condition roads through the rugged, slow-motion landslide of Portuguese Bend on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. The ride is comfy. It's supple over bumps but floaty over the big stuff. Associate Online Editor Nick Yekakin said. When things got particularly rough, Road Test Editor Chris Walton characterized the suspension as boundy, all spring, no damper. But most Highlander owners will never experience that situation.